people, can you give us a little introduction of yourself? Yes, uh, my name is Catherine Ponder and I come from the United States. I come from St. Louis, which is where the Mississippi and the Missouri River yes. come together in the middle of the country. Mm -hmm. I'm, at the, um, I'm at Washington University um, and I'm a professor of medicine and I, I actually do not see patients with MPS, but I've been involved in research on animal models of MPS and I've been interested in gene therapy for MPS and that's what my research is on. Okay. Um, you just had your presentation. Uh, can you tell us uh, in short what the presentation is all about? Right, so I was talking about the challenges in treating musculoskeletal disease and mucopolysaccharidosis. And what I talked about was a little bit on my research which involves gene therapy for mucopolysaccharidosis. And we can use this as sort of a poor man's way to assess the effect of enzyme replacement therapy or, or ERT. And what we do is we, inj we inject a, a vector with a gene for the deficient enzyme into the blood at two or three days after birth. And then we can get long-term expression and then use this to assess the efficacy on, on bone disease. And I talked about hip dysplasia, spine disease, and the effect upon bone links. And in some, the hip dysplasia has been something that has not been totally prevented with bone marrow transplant. Um, I think the data are a little bit early on the effect of enzyme replacement therapy. Um, and we've looked at the effect of our gene therapy, which again is a, a substitute for enzyme replacement therapy, and have found that the, the hip function is actually very good in all of our treated dogs, and that all of them are able to walk for as long as they live, which is up to 11 years in some of the dogs, whereas the untreated MPS7 dogs can't walk beyond six months. So we thought the hip dysplasia was very promising. We also have looked at spine disease, and here the effects are somewhat less um, impressive um, to the to bordering to bordering on not being very good, and that we still see hypoplasia of the vertebral bodies, and we still see a lot of degenerative changes. And this has been the case for bone marrow transplant, certainly for our gene therapy. And I think it looks a little bit early with enzyme replacement, but I suspect that. Enzyme replacement is also going to fail to prevent spine disease. And then the third thing I talked about was that of the effect upon growth. And I think that bone marrow transplant enzyme as well as gene therapy have all been able to improve the lengths of of long bones such as the femur which is you know which which will translate into greater height in patients but it does not completely normalize bone growth. Um, so those are basically the things that I talked about and again I think it's encouraging that there is some effect but we can't treat everything and the reason we can't treat everything is because <coughs> excuse me is because it's difficult for the enzyme that's injected into blood to diffuse to tissues that don't have a very good blood supply. <coughs> and the results of your research are very promising. <coughs> Do you have, can you look a little bit into the future? What are your expectations? Right, so I think we have to have a new direction because I think it will be impossible to ever prevent all of the problems with bone disease. Yes. So we have to understand how is it that accumulation and gags can result in degenerative changes and we have to understand this process. We have to understand why it is that the bones don't grow better and what we might do to improve that. And I think until we get this basic understanding, we're not going to be able to get new treatments. And I do think that it will be impossible for simply replacing the enzyme to fix everything because the enzyme cannot get into these tissues that have a poor blood supply. Um. How much of your professional time have you spent on diseases like MPS? And really well, I, I actually am a hematologist or a blood doctor, okay. and I've worked on hemophilia, and actually there is a 
recent um, report in the New England Journal of Medicine that hemophilia has been cured in some patients with hemophilia B due to factor IX deficiency. So I do think there is a promise of being able to apply this gene therapy technology to treating mucopolysaccharidosis. I became interested in MPS about 20 years ago and have continued to work on it in both mouse and dog models and have become very interested in trying to understand what are the abnormalities that lead to the abnormalities of bone and joints and heart valves as well. Okay. And um, what do you think about this uh, this weekend? Oh, well, first of all, I love the Netherlands. I've been to the <laughs> Netherlands with my family on three bicycle trips. Um, but I also really like this meeting, which I come to every two years, because I really like the opportunity for families to come and get more information and also the opportunity for physicians and scientists to talk with the families and see what are the things that they complain of. And I think it's it's very important for the families to get as much information as they can. And I think a meeting like this is really perfect for them to be able to get as many questions answered as possible.